In this series, you'll see... The fake watch. Oh, no way, it weighs exactly the same as mine. Fake money. Fake fishing rods, 36 bucks. Any bites? Yeah, there's a fish. What's that? Welcome to Astrakhan. The Chinese sleeper. Oh, huh, it's crazy. What's up, Cox? Kondrasov catches fish everywhere. Bon appetit, everyone. Guys, greetings from Cambodia. This is the first of three Southeast Asian countries that we're visiting in order to get some ideas about real estate investing. Welcome to Cambodia. I am in Cambodia, it's capital city. The name of the city is Phnom Penh. This visit is part of a very interesting trip. I haven't been to Asia for a long time. Five years to be exact. I stayed in a five-star hotel. There's a view of the river. The room is gorgeous. I'll give you a quick overview. Here's the bathtub. In general, I'm really surprised by the large number of expensive cars on the roads. A huge construction site. Take a look, literally the whole city is being built up. A lot of parks. The Asian Paralympic Games are taking place here now. This is my first time here. I am here to show and tell you how much the property costs here. My next stop is Vietnam, then Bali. And now I'm in Cambodia. In my opinion, these are very interesting markets in terms of investment. Therefore, I will try to show some interesting local objects to show life in general. I'd never heard of Cambodia before and haven't seen anybody shoot anything here, so it'll be rather interesting for me. Stay tuned. Let's figure out what pen on pen is and why people buy real estate here. I'll check out the spa here after two flights. We took a connecting flight from Moscow to Bangkok. It was nine hours long, I guess, from Moscow, and then another hour or so up here. There's also a fitness center. Yeah, people do sports. Cool. I want to admit that the service in this hotel is really cool. When you come out of the pool, there's an ice-cold towel water. Best part is that the beds are heated, though maybe they were heated in the sun. Nice. I feel a little dizzy. Feels great. I miss swimming. Come on, I'll show you the bathhouse. I don't like the steam sauna, or the hammam as we call it. It's really cool in here. A wall of salt bricks. It's definitely... Oh, they're hot, too. They made a Russian bath with Himalayan salt bricks. Let's heat it up. Great. Gosh, I was so sweaty, my head stopped working. Cool. Well, the water's not ice cold. That's a drawback. One of the advantages is the bench. Lay down like that. Nice. With such a view. We are in the French Quarter, but there's a nuance. We're not in France. I'd like to introduce Oleg. Oleg, hello. Hello. Why did we meet in Cambodia in the French Quarter? How did this happen? Tell me a little about yourself. What are you doing here? Why would you invite me here? Oh, hi. My name is Oleg. I'm the head of the office of the Home Map Company in Southeast Asia. We sell real estate investment properties in Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Thailand. Right now, we're located in the capital of Cambodia, Phnom Penh. This place is called Diamond Island. The most expensive real estate in the city is located here. It's designed particularly in the French style. The locals themselves call it Chinatown because most of the residents here are Chinese. The most expensive properties here. This is the French Quarter in Cambodia where the Chinese live. Well, we should film the greeting against the Golden Elevator, which is still, mind it, covered with film. Oh, 
Oleg, why Cambodia in general? And most importantly, why this city, the name of which I can't pronounce, Phnom Penh? Phnom Penh, that's correct. You're doing great. I've been practicing it all night. Cambodia is far from being the most popular and studied destination in general among foreign investors, but at the moment, Cambodia is the fastest growing economy in the region, which has been steadily producing more than 6% annual GDP growth for the last 10 years. The rate decreased slightly during COVID, as in all countries, but here the growth rate was 3 to 4% even in 2020. It's a fast growing, developing economy, and from our point of view, this is exactly the place where real estate will have the highest performance over the next 10 years. Uh, hold on, what about Turkey and Dubai? Certainly all markets have their own peculiarities. Both Turkey and Dubai are obviously interesting real estate markets, but on the one hand, they're somewhat oversaturated. First of all, of course, at the expense of our compatriots in the last year and a half, we all heard the news that in Turkey the authorities are even talking about forbidding foreigners to buy real estate. In addition to that, both in Turkey and in Dubai there are quite high risks because at some point sanctions will be imposed on Russian citizens. That is, we all know that the investment accounts of Russian citizens have been blocked even in Dubai and so on. In this regard, Cambodia is as neutral as possible. It means neutrality in the foreign policy situation, and it's absolutely safe for Russian investors to invest money here. Before flying here, I did a little research. Uh, firstly, I haven't found any videos from Cambodia at all. That is, there are very few popular bloggers on the subject. And the second thing, guys who are also engaged in investments told me, why? You should have invested three years ago. We'd already made 400% profit. I said, why didn't you tell me before? And they say, I thought we told you. Oh, the rate of urbanization will definitely remain high in this area in the near future, currently reaching 24%. If you consider the entire population of Cambodia, 4 million people live in cities, and about 2.7 million of them are in Phnom Penh. The urban population of Phnom Penh is constantly growing and getting richer, so in the long term, the demand for rent will definitely grow. You can't make two or three times earnings on value growth. That phase has indeed been passed. And if you want to multiply your earnings, you should have entered several years ago, but accordingly, the risks were much higher back then. Hmm. Everyone who bought real estate in COVID actually made a pretty good profit. Oleg, tell us, please, we're in such a beautiful place. You really feel like somewhere in Europe, in France. How much does an apartment cost here? Does it make sense to come and buy an apartment in a finished house? Well, this particular area is one of the most expensive real estate in general in Cambodia. And the price per square meter here ranges somewhere between four and a half and five and a half thousand dollars. That is, for this market, it's certainly too expensive. But is it worth investing now or not? Uh, from my personal point of view, no. That is, Cambodia is not about some luxury premium experience. Here, the demand for such real estate that exists was very limited. Therefore, perhaps the projects of such a level were worth entering a little earlier, just a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, there are very expensive hotels, such as the one I live in. To be honest, I'm surprised at the level of the staff, and the hotel itself is very beautiful. The viewing platform there is amazing. By the way, I regularly see the so-called tuk-tuks or auto rickshaws on the streets, and next to them, some very expensive cars, such as Rolls-Royce and Lamborghini. How's that possible? Well, there's been a huge influx of foreign investment recently, largely due to the new investment law issued in 2021, which has greatly liberated the hands of foreign investors on the one hand, and on the other hand, has made investment in Cambodia much safer. That's where all these expensive hotels, Rolls Royces on the streets, and so on came from. That is primarily the Chinese who move their assets here, develop infrastructure here, build real estate, bridges, and so on. So there are quite a lot of foreign investors who come here and bring their money, and the lifestyle that we're observing here these days. In short, we arrived at Coconut Park. Look how beautiful it is. Everything's green. Now we're going to take a walk here. Oleg, we are walking around. It's a beautiful park. Nice neighborhood. Tell us more about this place, please. We're still in the Diamond Island area. This particular place is called Coconut Park. It's one of those new city parks. That is, Phnom Penh's been developing a lot of urban infrastructure for people in general lately. There's one of the parks here. There are various cafes, learning centers for children, children's rooms, a hockey arena, and so on. We came to a Canadian hockey school. There are a lot of Canadian banks here, by the way. And here's what it looks like. Cool. I thought they were on ice skates, but those are roller skates. 
Well, let's go. Disappointment. As far as I'm concerned, the development is going on both here and across the river. And I see some kind of bridge being built. Diamond Island is built by a single developer. I mean, it's a huge, complex project that's been developing for about six years. And there's a lot more to build here. There's a bridge under construction that will connect the two parts of the city. The part of the city that's now across the strait, it's... Well, it's not well developed yet. In general, it is planned that the new center of the city will be just across the river. There will be an integrated development with proper urban planning and so on. Those people who buy property on that side, accordingly, they'll have access to this park. Certainly, yeah. I mean, it's close. Five minute walk. Now, it takes 40 minutes to get there by car, and in a year's time, it'll be five minutes walk. Let's see what else is interesting here. Let's go. We continue to explore the city. This time we came to the Morgan Tower. What's this place? It's one of the largest business centers in the city, also located on Diamond Island. We want to go up to the roof just to enjoy the panorama of the city. Let's go, let's go. The system broke down. Stowaway, like on the subway. Though Face ID analyzed my face, it's super modern. In general, well done. They build everything with super top-notch technology. Americans can only dream about that. Uh, the difference in quality is very noticeable, in fact. The real estate that was built five years ago has all sorts of noticeable flaws. And the ones under construction right now are the highest end of what exists on the planet right now. Therefore, guys, if you invested five years ago, you made an investment in a bad phase of the market. You should have invested two years ago. Well, those who entered the projects five years ago were making money on capitalization growth. <laughs> yeah. But those who are entering now are making money on rentals. The transparent floor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm actually extremely afraid of heights, but uh, in general, it's okay to stand like this. But I'm not ready to step in here. Let's check out how well they build it. Here it is. Beautiful, very beautiful. That is an artificial island, which in the future is planned to be something like Penum Pen City. There will be a business center with office buildings, luxury real estate. There's a kind of local Beverly Hills in that part of town. We'll go there and talk about that district in more detail. That is, all the richest people of Cambodia live there. And the historical center of the city is on the other side. That is actually the historical part of the city is over there. There's your hotel. That's cool. It's the first time I've ever seen such cooling. Water cool. It's safer on the beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't even think straight. It's so scary. But you should always do something you've never done in your life. Damn. I just don't think about what's down there and don't look down. I gotta get my hands on that shit. That's it, I'm stronger now. I'm kind of overcoming my fear. Well, at least it's crazy. What advantages do you see in Cambodia in general, specifically in Phnom Penh? Uh, why not the uh, popular Siam Reap, where Angkor Wat is located? Why not Angkor Wat? Why namely this place? Siam Reap is mainly a tourist town, which people visit for two or three days in order to see one particular attraction, nothing else. And this is where the whole economy of the country is based. This city is about making money, about business. There are a huge number of expats living here. Their numbers have grown, particularly since 2021 when they passed the new investment law. They come here to do business. It has a rapidly growing economy, highly liberal legislation, absolutely no currency control, and a stable currency. So in addition to the fact that the dollar is allowed to circulate freely, the local currency real is also pegged to the dollar. So the currency is uh, like Dirham in Dubai. Yeah, 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 same thing, absolutely. The exchange rate of one dollar is 4,100 reals. I was asked for a deposit when I checked into the hotel, and no one was surprised that I gave dollars. In fact, the majority of local restaurants not only accept dollars, but the prices of the menus are given in dollars. So, if you want to pay in reals, you have to convert it by yourself. Great. 
So the only places where they ask you to pay in reals are like markets, little eateries, and so on. And even there, obviously, everyone will gladly accept dollars. So dollars are primary here. Uh, I would say, yeah, most likely. Rather convenient. Since we're in such a place, it's worth mentioning that in fact the city is standing on a river. It's not a usual river, it's the Mekong River. It's the main transport artery of Southeast Asia. Sailing that way, we get to Vietnam. That way, to Laos. What's the best way to explore the city? Visit the local market. This is what it looks like. Looks like a usual market. T-shirts. Statues. Another surprising thing about Cambodia, it's very cheap. After Dubai, prices are 10 times cheaper. Sometimes even 20 times cheaper. Foot massage costs $5. Look at the coconuts. That's the content. Naturally, we immediately went looking for fish. No market's complete without a fish stall. It looks really cool. And the best part, there are no flies. Where are the flies? It's a quality product. Look, what is this? Amazing. What's this? Do you eat this? Do you eat this? Delicious? You have to boil it, he says. You have to boil it before eating. <laughs> These are mango crabs. Note that at many markets, they're dirty. Here, they're washed and cleaned. Perfect. Just look at it. That's why I love Cambodia. Look, here we have shrimp, lobsters, oysters. Ooh, look, some tiger crabs. All sorts of things. There's even salmon, mackerel. Here we have meat. It's over 86 Fahrenheit, and all the meat looks as fresh as possible. There's not a single fly. It's pretty clean. I don't understand how they do it. Let's go further. I've never seen anything like this. Look, it's the silver carp in the tank. Huge silver carp. Look at that. You can buy a live silver carp. I've never seen them anywhere. And here we have eels, delicacy too. They're alive too. Chinese sleepers, look, amazing. Chinese sleeper, trash fish, and it's actually really tasty. But in Russia, they destroy all other fish. If they get into a pond, they eat all the fry, all the roe. But it's very tasty, and they sell it here. And here we have groupers. Look at them. Listen, I love such places. It's like a village market in Moscow. Oh, and this, uh, I forgot what it's called. Very tasty fish, by the way. Ice fish, I guess. Incredibly tasty. Rarely seen elsewhere. How do you tell if a fish is good, fresh, or not? Anyways, look at the eyes. What's up, Cox? All those who hit dislikes will sit like this. Cox. Here are the pigeons, look. Mm, poor birds. Ugh, smells like the village. Here's one chicken eating another. Red snapper, pay attention. Chicken, chicken ready to cook, and all sorts of little eggs. For a moment, I felt like in Madagascar. If you haven't seen the video from here, be sure to check it out. Very interesting story in terms of the same kind of market, except there are flies everywhere, unsanitary conditions. It's already changed because we filmed it about seven or eight years ago and the smell and general feelings are a little bit similar. Look at that mop. Fried fish, beverages. The food is wrapped in palm leaves, soup, fried chicken. They fry squids here. Ooh, looks decent. Actually, you can have a nice breakfast with prepared shellfish. In general, it's kind of a local food court where you can probably cook anything you buy. They roast corn or whatever it is. All in all, it's a nice market. I recommend visiting it if you want to. Oh, gold, silver. Wow, it's so shiny in here. Elephants, they are so beautiful. Look how cool the light is. The LEDs make it incredibly shimmery. Look at the rings. What's the price? $50? $50 for this watch. He's got one like this. Check it out. Oh, no way, it weighs exactly the same as mine. 
$85. Good quality, and you can't tell the difference. I'll be honest with you, he'll sell it for $80. He says to take it for $80. Look, it's amazing, honestly. Frankly speaking, I can tell the difference, but it's 80 bucks. They're of the same weight. Incredible. You can't tell a damn thing from the original. I now have doubts that I have the original. I just got it as a gift. Could they give me one for 80 bucks? Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, if you can't afford a real watch, you can have one of these. I don't think anybody can tell by eye. Well, we've come to the casino, I guess. Look how beautiful it is. There's such a chandelier. That's the policeman. Look. And as usual, the casino smells like casino. Anyone who's been in a casino knows it. Something like the smell of cigarettes, money, and luck. I, I guess, or failure, emotion, sweat. At the entrance, they uh, asked me to take off my glasses so that the camera would remember my face. Surprisingly, we're allowed to film. Okay, okay, just myself. You can film yourself, but you can't film there. Well, probably so the guests don't freak out. In short, what's special about it? They were allowed to build only one building that could be used as a casino. They realized that there was not enough space, as there were more people wishing to attend it that could be seated. Five years later, they built another building on a neighboring street and made an underpass, saying it was one building, one project. Five years later, they realized that once again there was not enough space for everyone, and they built a third building, which is about to be completed, and made another underpass to that building and said it was one project, and it was the same building. Alex, I would like to introduce you to our partner, Mr. Wayne. This will be an interesting conversation because, on the one hand, he's been in the investment and local real estate business for a long time. That is, he runs a company with Chinese roots that provides investment consulting in this area, which means they work directly with real estate developers and set up sales offices and marketing for them. On the one hand, we can get a deeper understanding of the real estate business. On the other hand, this is a vibrant representative of the Chinese diaspora in Phnom Penh. Huh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. It's a great place, great food, great people. Uh, glad you like it. Why did you choose this place? Well, because China has a great influence on Cambodia, and this is a very typical Chinese-Cantonese restaurant. One of the best in town. We have different varieties of dim sum and fried rice here. In fact, it's a traditional breakfast. Let's have some tea. Cheers. Well, I'll try the foot. Uh, of course. First thing. It's hard to get them. It looks tough. Chicken feet. Hmm. That's delicious. Come on, come on. Just taste it. It's spicy. Well, it's fine, actually, if you don't think that it's a chicken foot. It's a bit sweet and very tender. That's delicious. Peking duck. How many Chinese live here? Uh, at the peak time before the pandemic, over 500,000 people lived here. And now, because of the effects of the pandemic, the number of jobs has dropped significantly. Yeah, there are still more than 200,000 Chinese living here for a long period of time, working or doing business. No problem. As long as they have work permits, citizens from any country can live work, and uh, open bank accounts without problems here. Name three advantages you like here and three disadvantages you don't like. I'll start with a simple one. Why do I like it here? Well, I'm Chinese doing business here. I feel highly respected by both the government and the community as a Chinese citizen. Do you know the relationship between China and Cambodia? I mean, a nice friendship can be traced back to the early days of the Republic of China. The locals are delighted to see me, a foreigner, living here. Yeah, so this is the uh, first advantage. The second positive thing, of course, is opportunities. As we said earlier, the dollarized economy, the fast-growing GDP, and the extremely favorable environment for foreign capital. Of course, there is another reason. Cambodia is relatively close to China. If I have to go home, it's 
only about a three and a half hour flight. The reason why I don't like it here, hmm. I think the education problem would definitely be on my list. Because of the national crisis associated with the country's civil war in the 70s and 80s, uh, Cambodia is now basically a new country built on ruins. Uh, an entire generation has been deprived of a proper education. Yeah, that's, that's why as a businessman, I have a huge problem with hiring qualified local staff. Yeah, it's the same in Dubai. That's right. Uh, people come from Pakistan or India. And the second thing. In fact, it is a fairly free country for the businessmen, but sometimes there's too little regulation, which can be positive, but can also cause problems. For example, some types of illegal business, such as corruption and uh, gambling. Yeah, these, these are the uh, common problems. Hmm. The third reason. Perhaps the infrastructure is still underdeveloped. Oh, and of course I can name a fourth disadvantage. Cambodia is definitely not child-friendly because there are very few green spaces. Because the economy, in my opinion, is growing too fast. <laughs> and the government doesn't really care about building parks and comfortable gardens for the uh, people to enjoy. So, for example, I'd like to bring my daughter here, but uh, honestly, I don't even know what I could show her if she were here. Is the test over? Did I pass the test? I would like to make a conclusion about the food. Everything is very tasty here. For example, the soup is cooked with bone broth, which gives it an incredible taste. Unlike the same in America, where they cook the soup just with the breast, and you feel like you're drinking water with the chicken. Basically, all the dishes are cooked with very good ingredients, high quality. And one more thing's the price. In Dubai, you feel like a bum when you come into a restaurant, but here you feel like a very rich man, because the entire table costs 31 bucks a person, and you can eat as much as you want. It's a buffet. That is, you ate soup, you wanted more, and they brought you more. Everything's delicious. Thanks for the hospitality. I was surprised by the Chinese food. I was in China and I didn't like the food, but here it was somehow delicious. Probably because we were with the Chinese who like good food and they order the most delicious things. Although we said, bring us everything, everything you have. Oleg, you're a Moscow-based IT real estate agency. Why aren't we in Moscow? Uh, we're exploring new markets. Lately, the Moscow real estate market has changed drastically for objective reasons, and investing in Moscow property has objectively become not as profitable as it was 8 or 10 years ago. We were looking for markets where we could provide clients with a product that would be profitable for them. And, on the other hand, that product should be absolutely safe to invest in. Southeast Asia is absolutely open. It welcomes Russian investors. And these markets are growing very well right now. Tell me, on what principle do you choose countries for investment? Why isn't it Turkey, Dubai, or Miami? We analyze the macroeconomic indicators of countries. What, in fact, are we interested in? Well, we need the right entry point. That is, not the peak price and stable, clear economic growth. Now, in this respect, countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia are well ahead of Turkey and Dubai, which Russian citizens love to invest in. This doesn't mean that those markets are bad, it means that, from our point of view, the Asian markets currently have the better entry point. I texted my partner that I was going on an investment tour, saying that we will visit three countries, and accordingly we will try to buy some real estate for diversification and for getting some income. I listed the countries. Vietnam, Cambodia, and Indonesia, Bali. And he told me, Alex, I checked Cambodia a couple of years ago. Foreigners weren't allowed to buy there. They'll take it from you. What kind of programs are there nowadays? Well, there might be some kind of protection from the government. That is, I can come right now, for example, if you have some property, and I can take it right away, buy it. Any guarantees that they won't take it away? He said, the locals with machetes will come and take it away. 
Oh, we won't consider the extreme situation when the Khmer Rouge comes with a machete. Uh, I guess that's unlikely to happen, but in general, certainly in reality, any real estate investment is first of all a very expensive product that mustn't be risked to the extent that it'll be taken away. So if there's a probability that you will be deprived of the asset completely, it means that this is not a viable option at all. All three markets have their peculiarities, and probably we'll discuss them in detail when we work in specific locations. If we talk about Cambodia, for foreigners there is a full inalienable right of ownership. That's the first point. Second, in 2021, a new law on investments was adopted under which the government has no right to take away your investment. That is, whatever project you invest in on the territory of the country, it is inalienable. From this point of view, foreign interests in Cambodia are more than protected. And what about the escrow accounts? There aren't any here. The market's kind of too young. There are certain things you have to pay the greatest attention to. First of all, the reputation and experience of the developer. Again, you may encounter a situation that the developer has built a hundred products, but this doesn't mean anything because the standard of quality has only just begun to appear on the market. Therefore, there may be many projects, but that doesn't mean that the developer will complete everything. But when we start working with the developer, we exercise due diligence, check the legal component of the deal, the availability of all permits, and so on. And we always make sure that the developer has no financial problems and has the ability to complete the projects. Because, in general, unfinished construction and some delays in projects might take place. And our task is to reduce these risks, to find projects where the probability of construction delays will be close to zero. Hmm, who are the top developers in Cambodia? In Dubai, for example, Miras, Emar, it's clear. And they also had no escrow accounts until a certain time, and now they've appeared. I think they'll eventually happen here, too. List the top developers, please. Look, here's the following situation. In fact, most of the coolest developers we work with are Chinese companies. Among the local developers certainly can distinguish the Prince Group. These are companies that have completed about five to six projects across the country. I wouldn't say the Chinese names now. The question is correct, I understand the reasoning behind it, but Jing Hui Chao, that's how they all sound. Unfortunately, I can't. Well, let's attach them here, here, and here. These are the top three real estate developers in Cambodia. In every country we visit, we'll give you the top three, at least something. Guys, I want to show you how to cross the street in Phnom Penh. It's quite an interesting experience because no one gives way to you here at all. Watch this. I stepped on it. Supposedly they should let me cross. I am coming. No one cares at all. Just like that. You can cross the street only if you're hugging them. It's just crazy. It's very unusual after Dubai where they'll put you in jail for that. If you don't let a pedestrian cross, the fine is insane. Well, you can't do that in America either. They respect pedestrians there, but here, no one cares who you 